Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Well, you know, I got a problem with my state car, eh? I think the governor is sewered in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to work today and we're going to start to strip the engine down, see if I can get at the governor, see if I can discover what's wrong with it, if there is, in fact, anything wrong with it at all. So that's what we're up to today. So these Kohler engines, uh, they're known as a bucket engine. And that's because this block part down here, it's kind of like a bucket, and the cover for it is at the top. You just take some bolts out here and lift the, the cover off the top. So you don't have to split the block apart to get at the innards of the engine. Anyways, to start with, we're gonna to have to take all the flywheel and, and alternator, or whatever you alternator, I guess it is, magneto or whatever, off the top. This grill on the flywheel just held on with the snaps on the plastic. So we're going to try and take this flywheel off. Before we take the flywheel off we have to remove the coil. So that's held in place with a couple of Allen screws here. And uh, one thing you should note when you're taking the coil off there's a, an upside and a downside to the coil, so you should make note that the auxiliary connection here, the kill wire, goes on the top side, so that when it uh, comes time to put back on, we can get it put on the right way, because if you put it on upside down, it won't work. Set that down there, I'm going to put these screws back in here just so that I don't lose them. Uh, this is a tapered shaft at the end of the crankshaft, and the flywheel sets into that. So what I like to do is put this, well you can put the washer on it again I guess, I guess if you want, but it doesn't matter. I don't think I will because I'm going to put this on there. Just put it in like maybe halfway, put it all the way in if you wanted, but I put it in about halfway. And then uh, I have a pry bar here and I like to set the pry bar someplace under the flywheel so that you're not just pressing right on the cover, maybe on, a, on one of the uh, connection bolts here, fastening bolts like this one in the corner. Be a good spot because what we're going to do is pry up on that. But anyway, we're going to put some down pressure on this at the same time we're going to hit this because what we want to do is uh, shock this into releasing from that tapered shaft. So sometimes it takes quite a good whack, but make sure you get some good up pressure on it. All right, because that's not coming off so easy, I'm going to thread this all the way in just so. I'll be hitting down on the uh, flange of the bolt rather than just on the threads. Okay, this doesn't seem to be working too good, so I'm going to have a big, bigger hammer. There we go. But threading this bolt all the way in protects the threads on it. So then all you're really doing is damaging the head of the bolt. And I did kind of flatten that out a little bit, mush it down, but I can fix that if it uh, turns out to be a problem. So now we should be able to lift this right up. The magnet was holding it together. So inside this, there's magnets around here. And there's also a keyway that I just heard fall out. Where did it go? Oh, there it is down there under the coils. We want to make sure we hold on to that key because we don't want to lose that key. Uh, another thing that can happen is uh, if the firing gets out of whack, in other words, if it's not firing right, you know, you're getting back firing a lot, sometimes this key will be deformed because that also sets up the timing because of the coil and whatnot. So this is the uh, Magneto, I guess you could call it. Take the starter off next, I think. All right, you just let that starter fall down out of there. And put these bolts back on here. Or nuts, I mean. All right, there we go. Set that right down there for now. So yeah, we want to take this coil pack off, so this line, if you follow that down, comes this connector. So in order to get that connector out, you have to take this voltage regulator out, voltage regulator out. Okay. 
So we take those two bolts out of there and we bring the voltage regulator out. So this is just a pin plug that we just can unplug. It's in there pretty good, I must say. You know what, I'm going to spray a little bit of lubricant on that because uh, I don't want to break the pins. Closest thing I have to a penetrating lubricant is WD-40. It's moving. Uh, there we go. So that's our uh, voltage regulator. There's uh, two wires here, two white wires on the outside. So to try to release those connectors, sometimes you can do it with just a tie wrap. I just cut the end off the tie wrap here to make it straight. And then you can slide that down. And now, the way those tips work is there's metal forced out from the end of the wire, forced out this way. So as it slides into the connector, that wire will push back until it gets into the recess and it clicks back out and locks it in. So if you push your tool in from the front end, it should help make that piece go down flat. So push that in as far as you can get it. And then this should pull out just like that. See that? See that little tab right there? Now what we want to do is just take your fingernail and pry that out just a little bit. It doesn't have to come too far because if you pull it up too far, you'll break the little tab off and it won't work. So we get that one out. Let's try this other one here. So again, on the recess side, that's where you stick your tie wrap. And you push it in there as far as you can get it. And then hopefully that pulls out just like that. And the polarity of these wires doesn't matter. Uh, there's no north or south plus or minus. It's just the AC is coming out of this coil. So with our wires removed from the connector now, we can remove this coil pack. And this is a Torx, I think it's a 25. And we don't want to damage this coil pack, that's for sure, because uh, it's got a lot of copper in it, <laughs> for one thing. This is another little handy thing I found. Uh, I have a short extension on this, and the extensions, of course, all the tools are chromed, or black chrome, or they call them now, and they're, they're right smooth. Some of them are knurled, some of them aren't. But what I did was I just took some grip tape, uh, cut a piece of grip tape, wrapped it around the short extension, so it gives my... Uh, dried up fat fingers, something to grip on to help turn it. Okay, so we'll take that screw out, that screw out, and then we should be able to lift this coil pack right out of here and place that up here in the seat where it's protected. And then just to save these screws, we're going to put those back in here. This is the uh, throttle control plate, I guess you'd call it. Okay, so that can just slide down there. I'm going to put these screws again. I'll put these back in here. The oil filter is going to come off with the cover. The dipstick will come off with the cover, but I think I'll pull the dipstick out because if not, it'll stick up in the air when we uh, take that cover off. We're going to let these screws go now. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them. So we're going to let those go and then that's when we'll be able to take this cover off. Uh, when we take the cover off, this is an oil seal around here. So we have to be careful that we don't damage that or else we'll have to replace it. Uh, one of the common fa faults they have with these Kohler Courage engines is these uh, cover bolts come loose. They work themselves loose for whatever reason. And when they work themselves loose, uh, then they'll unscrew and the flywheel will hit on them. And when the flywheel hits on them, it catches them and then it does a lot of damage to either the block. You often see cracks in the block here. Uh, there's a line and pin on it that sometimes the line and pin gets bent out of shape. So I'm saying that not because I've experienced it, but because that's what I've seen when I read about Kohler engines. Okay, they're all loose now. So now I can take my drill driver and remove these. One, two, thirteen, fourteen, there you go. They're all the same size too, so we don't have to worry about which goes where. We're going to tap up in the edges of this to try to release it. And we don't want to go right savage in this, eh? Because we don't want to break anything.
I think it's moving. There she goes. Now, when we lift this cover off, there's going to be some stuff under here that we're going to want to pay attention to. I'm expecting to see the governor gearing kind of messed up. Oh, I want to take this wire out of here. Yeah, just like that. So let's lift this up slowly. Then we'll flip it over. Yeah, yeah. See this pin right here? The governor gear was supposed to be on that pin. And it's not there. As I just uh, scan around here, I see there's a little piece of something that was on the uh, governor crosslink arm. The oil in here, I'll show you it in a minute. Pretty runny, eh? And it's like almost green color. So I'm not sure how well you can see in there. But yeah, that oil is uh, doesn't look like oil. It should be dark like almost black and it's kind of a light pale green <laughs> so a few other things we could check here uh, underneath this washer this is the decompression uh, pin so that looks to be intact these are the cams say eh? and uh, if you notice the cams have, there's IN on this side EX on that side so if you ever take those gears off they say what you should do is turn the crank so that uh, these index marks line up with those two marks. I'm going to take the spark plug out. If I take the spark plug out, there'd be no compression then, it'd be easier to turn everything. I'm going to try and grab it with these channel locks, and if I mark it up, well, I can clean that up easier than I can this surface down here. So, I don't know which way this rotates. I'm just trying to get these uh, wheels turned around here to the right position. Okay, right about there, I think ought to do it. So now if I want to take these gears out, I can because I have these lined up. But I don't think I'm going to take those out just yet. What I'm going to do next is drain that oil because there's parts of the uh, governor lost down in that sump. Because the governor, it's a set of gears that slide under this shaft right here. So I think I'm going to have to order another gasket and I'm going to have to order the gear set. So while I go on track that down and try to find a supplier for those parts, I'm going to drain the oil out of this and then uh, we'll be back to have a look at the sump, see what it looks like in there, see if we can recover those uh, governor gear parts. So uh, the sump is pretty well drained out and I can see the uh, governor gear. And I'm going to try and reach in there and get it. There's part of it, and here's another part, if I can get it, no, nope. just one sec, going to need my long nose pliers. So we'll see if we can get this part, trouble with these long nose pliers is, they don't close real tight on the end. There we go, there's another part of it, there's a bunch more parts in there somewhere. But I don't know, I can't see them or get them. I think we're going to take these cam gears off and get in there with a the rag and mop all that out. So, so far, these are the only pieces of the uh, governor that I've recovered. But it's good to know that my diagnosis was right. Uh, the governor was not working. Uh, this gear here, uh, there's supposed to be two flanges, two metal hinges on it, like gears, that as this gear spins, they will force themselves out. As they force themselves out, it forces this little little pin here in the middle to raise up as well. And when that raises up, it pushes on the governor cross lever, and then that moves the governor back and forth to control the engine speed. So I got this, all I had to do was get my fingers wedged in under there and push down on the shaft to lift up on the gear. So there you go. What's under that one? Just a counterweight, it looks like. Oh, I see a bunch more bits and parts and pieces in around that oil pump. Now, we're going to try the same procedure on this one. Push down here and lift up on the gear edges. There we go. Okay, lift that up. And there's the uh, uh, decompression workings right there. So we're going to just put that right here. 
So I'm going to reach in here and try and grab this part. So there's another, that's one of the metal flyaway wings that works the, uh, the centrifugal force on the governor. There's the other one. So they're both there. Uh, I thought there would be a couple of pins in there too, but I don't see them. There's no part seem to be broken off of those, so I'd say those are all intact. So at least none of those parts are going to be banging around in there. So, all right, I'm going to get a rag now and uh, try to clean out the rest of that uh, oil that's in the sump and try to make that pretty and clean. So I got the sump pretty well cleared out. I put a bunch of rags in there just to soap up the oil. And then I had this long screwdriver and it's a little bit magnetic. So I was looking in the corners, the various corners and whatnot, and I did find the two pins that uh, held the dogs for the uh, governor gear. So that was pretty nice. Glad I found those. So I've gone as far as I can go here until I can get the gear set, uh, the governor gear set and the gasket. So I've got those ordered. So whatever they show up, we'll put those in place. But for now, we're just going to, uh, you know, da 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 <laughs> The poor old estate car. It's had a rough, a rough life, I think. Anyhow, I'd like to really thank all my viewers who have offered tips and hints and ideas on what could be causing my estate card to over rev like it was. Uh, they sure were a great aid to me and a great assistance and, uh, you know, confirmed that I was on the right track when I decided to tear this engine apart to go after the internal governor workings. So thanks for that and appreciate all your views and all your time spent watching this video. Thanks for watching. Sure hope you have a great week. Don't forget thumbs up, me, eh? And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.